Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlleryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at stereoisomerism. Now I'm just going to take you back to uh, AS Chemistry when you were introduced to another type of isomerism uh, and that would have been um, structural isomerism or structural isomers. Now you probably would have known that you would have three different types of structural isomers. We have positional, functional group and chain. Now, if you don't know about them, or if you want to refresh yourself about them, three types of isomers, because you do need to know about them in A2, if you just click on the link below, uh, you can watch the video on um, the structural isomers. But in addition to that, in A2, you also need to know about stereoisomers. Now, stereoisomers come in two types. We have a geometric, or we can sometimes call it EZ, uh, and we have optical isomers. Um, now, both of these actually have the same definition, and the definition of a, um, of a stereoisomer is a molecule with the same structural formula, um, but a different arrangement of the atoms in space. So it's actually where the atoms are positioned uh, actually makes a difference. And we're going to look at the two types that are on here, and uh, I'm going to try and explain it using a model that will hopefully um, show you in a clear way how this thing actually works. So we'll start with geometric first. Now, geometric is also known as EZ, or cis and trans, um, and I'll explain in a minute now. So we have... Uh, imagine if we've got a molecule, and here's my uh, simple model here, it's just bits of blue tack and nails. Um, so we have two atoms which are actually in the middle here. Um, imagine these, that's a carbon and that's a carbon. Uh, and these two ones here, so these two parts here, that one and that one are just hydrogens on the end. And that white blob there is a CH3, and that white blob there is a CH3. So you'll know that actually, without the double bond, that's just bog standard butane, that fuel you can burn. Now, normally, if it has a single bond in the middle, well, what actually happens is these can actually rotate quite readily. Now, you can see there that that white one sometimes appears on the top, so the CH3 there, and sometimes it can spin around and appear on the bottom, so it can go like that. And likewise, this one can rotate as well uh, on the other side. So this can rotate freely between the actual bond. Now, what you have is if you have a double bond in between there, and that makes a slight difference. So... We're going to just put another bond in there, just another double bond. So another bond in there to make it a double bond. So let's just squeeze that into there. And you can see, if we just mold that into shape. Right, there's our double bond there, and we still have our hydrogens and CH3s, which you can see on that molecule there. So there's a double bond, there's two hydrogens, there's the CH3s. But with the double bond in place, actually what you get is you get a um, lack of rotation between the two. You can see that I can't twist that as freely um, as the one with the single bond. And because this doesn't rotate, it's actually this CH3 or these CH3s at the bottom are actually in a fixed position. They can't move. And because of that, that gives it a very unique property in terms of how it reacts. And we call that an isomer. Now, if I was to um, change that, we could have the CH3 on the top. Depending on how the molecule is actually made, it will depend on what type of isomer you could, what type of isomer you could get. But let's say if I had a um, a carbon there, the CH3 on there, this has actually got a special name, and we call this with the E's, sorry, with the uh, CH3s uh, opposite like that. We call that E. Butene, because you've got one, two, three, four carbons. The double bond is in between the second and third carbon, which are these two here. So we call that e-butene, um, also known as trans as well. So you could call it trans because it's opposite the two carbons. Um, if I had it on the other conformation, so where the CH3, um, the two CH3s are actually on the bottom, so both of them are on the bottom, then we call that um, Z, which actually is German for Zutzamen. Uh, which means these are on the, actually the same side uh, of the carbon, whereas the two hydrons are on the same as well. Uh, this is also known as cis butene So you've got to be aware that actually if you can have an EZ isomerism, that you've got to be able to make sure you put the EZ or the cis and trans in there as well. Now, this is called geometric isomerism, and the fact you can form that is only where you have a double bond, and if you notice, your carbons, so this and this, must be different. I can't have EZ if I have two CH3s on the same side, like this. That will not form an EZ uh, confirmation because we have two groups which are the same 
on the same carbon. So we must have a formation where we have two different groups on the same, uh, on the one carbon there. So if we look at these particular examples here, so this one has got two CH3 groups on the bottom. So that would be, uh, because these are on the same side, we call this um, Z, and we call it but 2 e which is this one here, and it's very important that we actually put the Z on there, um, whereas this one is the isomer, and we call this e but 2 e see, see, it's very important that actually what we must have are two different groups. These have got to be different on that side. We can't have two CH3s uh, on there, so I'm just going to put different on there. Okay, so that's crucial. Uh, if you don't have two different groups there, you cannot form EZ, um, and so that's very, very important. Right, and um, that's the first type of isomers, and that's geometric. And um, you do need to know how these things are made as well. And there is a video that looks into the um, synthesis of um, EZ uh, molecules as well. So we just put a check on the playlist. Um, to do with alkenes and it will be on there. Um, if you look at the next one, which is optical isomerism, now optical isomerism um, is actually, the word actually optical gives it a bit of a clue. Um, it's to do with light, and we'll come on to that in a minute. But what you have is a molecule, which is a carbon in the middle, and as long as that carbon has four different groups surrounding it, we actually have something called a chiral centre. And that, if you have a chiral centre, you actually have an optically active compound. Uh, and you can actually have um, an uh, isomer of an optically active compound. And so, for example, this one here, so you can see I've got C, and I've put WXYZ as just generic terms. Because this carbon has got four different groups coming off it, we can describe it as chiral. And its isomer would actually be a mirror image. Hence the word optical, it's a mirror image of the actual other, of the other molecule. So you can see here that this one is exactly the same as that one. The structural formula is the same, but the atoms are actually arranged differently. And it's a little bit like your hands. Your hands are chiral. You can see they've all got um, four fingers and a thumb, and on the right-hand side as well. But you can describe something as chiral as if it's non-superimposable. So if I lift my hands up like that, you can see that at no point does them hands actually superimpose over each other. You can see that the thumb for this hand is where my little finger is on that hand. And they are actually isomers, but they're mirror images, as you can see. And um, so we describe that as chiral as well. So molecules can behave in the same way. So when we have a pair of optical isomers, a bit like a pair of hands, uh, we call them enantiomers. Um, and it's given that posh word there. So you do have to remember that word. You do have to call them that. So these are a pair of enantiomers. Now, if we have a 50-50 mix, um, some exam boards do require you to know this, particularly AQA um, and NXL, I believe, as well. Um, then actually you have a 50-50 mix. We call them a racemic mixture. Um, and so this is where you have 50% of this. So imagine if you had a, a beaker uh, and you had 100 molecules in that beaker, exactly 100. Uh, 50 of them are this and 50 of them are this then we will describe that as a racemic mixture or a racemate. So, um, and this is what these two molecules are here. So just to give you a very specific example to show you what an optical isomer is. So we've got two molecules here. Um, one is a secondary alcohol uh, and the other one is a ketone. Um, one of them is optically active and the other one isn't. And what we're looking for is a um, chiral centre first. So if we go along here, we're looking at the carbons and you can see that actually... This carbon here, in the middle, uh, is uh, a chiral centre, and we know that because you can see we have four different groups hanging off it, and we're just going to highlight them as well. So we've got a hydrogen here, so that's one group. We've got a CH3 on the end here, so that's one group. Uh, we have a OH group, that's a different group, uh, and then all the way on the other side, uh, we have this, and you take into account the rest of the molecule, you've got to look at all of the molecule, and you can see that this carbon has four different groups hanging from it, so this one is optically active, uh, and actually um, it has a chiral centre, and it will have a, um, a, 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 a isomer that will be the mirror image of that, and you can redraw this in terms of this if you like, um, but it's a lot easier to, to see it in terms of the molecule, so actually this one 
is optically active because it has four different groups. And the point where it's optically active is this carbon here. There isn't any other carbon on there that is optically active. There's only one place. If we look at this molecule here, you might look and think, well, actually, that one's different as well because we have a CH3 here, we have a C2H5 there, and we have an oxygen there. But actually, this one isn't chiral. Um, and the reason why it's not chiral is because it only has three groups surrounding that carbon. You must have four different groups. Uh, that is crucial. So don't fall into this trap where you have different groups around this carbon. But because that double bond is effectively bonded to the oxygen twice, um, that effectively counts as um, two bonding to the same atom. So that one is not chiral, and it won't form any optically active compounds. Now, when we're looking about the detection of these, and how do we know if one of these, uh, if we do have something in there that's optically active, um, it's really straightforward. All you use is a, a um, polarised light. Now, light normally um, exists, so light from the sky, and from a light bulb, etc., um, will actually be scattered in all directions. And so this is, this is what's represented here, and they vibrate. The waves will vibrate in all kinds of directions. Now, a polarised light is basically putting a filter um, in front of, like a polarised filter, polarising filter, in front of a light source. And what that only does is that only allows light to move in one direction. So instead of light actually going, um, so you might have light coming towards you like that, and you might have light that's going vertically upwards. So a polarised filter might block this plane of light, and the only bit of light that will go through is in this plane of vision, so that might be like horizontal. So um, this is polarised, and then what can happen is actually if your plain polarised light hits a molecule that is optically active or has a chiral centre, it will rotate it in one direction. So you can see on there, so one enantiomer will rotate it that way, and one enantiomer will rotate plain polarised light that way. But both enantiomers will actually um, rotate them by the same amount. So this one is optically active, this molecule will actually have one enantiomer that will rotate it by so many degrees left, and its mirror image will rotate it by the same number of degrees, but in the opposite direction. So we say that's right. Now, just one thing to watch out for, um, and that's um, if you have a racemate or a racemic mixture, 50-50 um, mixes of um, enantiomers is called a, a, a racemic mix. If you put that in plain polarised light, actually it won't rotate plain polarised light, because if you have an equal amount of each enantiomer, and if one enantiomer rotates it left by X number of degrees, and this one will rotate it right by X number of degrees, then if you've got an equal amount, obviously they cancel out. And what you get is an effect, um, a, a beam of light which hasn't rotated. And that might give the impression that your molecule isn't optically active, but it might still be optically active. It might just be in a receiver mix. So just watch out for that really, really carefully. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. So just make sure that you know your keywords, which are racemate, enantiomers, chiral, cis, trans, EZ. And um, these two are very similar. And um, you can use cis or trans or EZ, and um, they both mean the same thing, or they all of them mean the same thing. Um, and just make sure you know your definitions. And um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.